So hello everybody. Welcome. I'm Christine Perre. We have um, some, some area members uh, who are um, supporters of this interoperability and standards program, who are contributors to that program. And we have guest speakers, Omar Elumi from Nokia and Carolyn Rubner from Siemens. So um, it's the, the floor is yours. Thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Okay. We'll speak about the Industrial Metaverse Exploratory Group uh, that a um, uh, few companies are joining forces to create this because we see uh, a need for the industry to sort out minimal interoperability requirements and high level architectures for the industrial metaverse and uh, make sure that we work with the uh, uh, industry associations and standards fora and body to make sure it happens. Uh, and actually we see immediate need for this. Uh, we will share a few thoughts about this. It's, it's work in progress that we are starting right now. And hopefully by the end of this presentation, we can have a discussion. Uh, maybe we uh, try to get your perspective on this, how you can contribute, how we can join forces. That's the spirit of the uh, discussion. We. Uh, might want to have at the end of this presentation. Uh, maybe if we can go to the next slide, and I think this is from straight from slides from uh, Neil Trevet, who is the chair of the MSF. So uh, I'm happy to hand over to him to present and put him on the spot. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no problem. So, um, yeah, th th thank you uh, to Ari and Christine for hosting this. So I'll, I'll keep it short because we want to get to the actual uh, industrial metaverse group. But for those who haven't come across the, the forum before, just a brief introduction. So um, we, as soon as people hear that we are working on standardization for the metaverse, of course, the first question is what is the metaverse? And uh, it's an interesting question because the metaverse is going to evolve in a very um, Darwinian way over the next uh, 10 to 20 years, probably. Um, and so it's very hard to uh, predict um, what the metaverse final shape is going to be, but it's real in the, in the fact that it's today bringing together multiple disruptive technologies, some of which we've listed here on this slide, AI, GPU processing, augmented and virtual reality, of course, here at Area. Uh, Web3, 5G, 6G uh, networking. Um, you bring these multiple disruptive technologies together. Uh, we are going to be able to combine the connectivity of the web with the immersiveness of spatial computing. There's going to be a wave front of short term commercial opportunities, whilst the larger vision of the metaverse uh, kind of comes uh, together. But to make those technologies work together, you need interoperability standards. Uh, I think many other folks are looking to break down silos and build a larger networked economy um, with in interoperability. And um, many folks regard the metaverse as being the um, evolution of the web itself, uh, bringing in spatial computing. Um, and of course, the web is a platform that's completely based on open standards. So whichever way you approach the metaverse and its evolution, interop interoperability is key. And Interoperability needs open standards and creating open standards takes standards organizations. And so there are scores, maybe hundreds of standards organizations uh, that suddenly need to work together if we're going to cooperate over building this larger uh, platform together. And the essential idea behind the Metaverse Standards Forum was uh, to create a venue for those standards organizations to cooperate and communicate. Uh, so next slide, Christine. And uh, the, the key thing to remember about the forum is that it's not another standards organization. That would just make the problem worse. Um, it's a venue for the standards organizations to come and cooperate. The, the mission of the forum is to help the standards organizations do their great work, uh, hopefully faster and better uh, with a broader input and broader visibility that the forum can provide. So um, the, the forum is 
intended to be a very open and welcoming venue for all of the standards organizations and the companies that are interested to use those standards. Um, the forum does have a number of deliverables. Uh, Christine, for example, has been uh, very instrumental in helping us start building the standards register, which is a database of metaverse standards and other test beds and open source, you can see. But the existing standards organizations on the right hand side in red, you know, they will continue to um, develop the standards that we all need. Uh, the forum exists you know, to help them and hopefully um, help them accelerate uh, the work uh, that they're doing. We're not uh, trying to control the metaverse or somehow define it in some strange way. We're very much a bottom up grassroots organization trying to find pragmatic short term interoperability opportunities and helping the standards organizations um, fill gaps, uh, meet those opportunities uh, for the good of the industry. Uh, we're a nonprofit and we incorporated in 2023. So we're still a young organization. Next slide. So when we launched the forum, we had 37 founding members. We wondered <clears throat> how much interest there was going to be. We've ended up with 2,500 uh, mm -hmm. members globally. So there is strong interest. Some of the members are listed down there on the left hand side. It's open to any organization to join. So not individual members, but organizations. And you know, with this breadth of membership, uh, it is an opportunity to gather requirements and expertise around uh, a, a table at a single venue and to get a lot of visibility for uh, the standardization work that's uh, ongoing. Next slide. And um, with so many members and not having a clear view of what the final goal of the metaverse is going to be, there's a recipe for potential chaos. So we've been quite careful to structure the work that we do uh, in a way that hopefully surfaces the priorities for the members. Uh, so we have polled the membership as to what are the interesting topics. We've bunched those into domains and we have working groups that pick on those domains and focus on specific areas uh, that we can hopefully add value uh, to the standardization landscape. I won't read all of these. You can read the kind of things that we're doing. There's a pipeline. There's proposals at the bottom in orange, there's exploratory groups and the industrial metaverse that we'll be talking about is in the exploratory group phase where we're building consensus on what the charter would be for an industrial metaverse working group. And then the working groups that are already approved are the ones in blue. And you can see it's quite a range. There's technical topics, lots of 3D assets and avatars and web interoperability but also things like privacy, so cybersecurity and uh, identity. Um, and I'm personally really excited to see the industrial metaverse uh, exploratory group start. I think the industrial metaverse is going, is going to be one of the first areas where metaverse technology really makes a significant industry impact. Uh, next slide, I think, is that my last slide? That's it, yeah. that's it. Great. Thanks. Yeah, uh, I think uh, you said it right. And um, and by the way, I, I work for uh, Nokia. My company is, um, we're not selling mobile phones anymore. We are uh, communication solution providers for uh, service providers and for enterprise markets. But we are interested uh, in understanding the requirements from the metaverse and the industrial metaverse. and. When we speak about the industrial metaverse, uh, the biggest problem we see is that if you speak to two different people, you get two different perspectives. Uh, there is no common agreement about the building blocks and the needs of in terms of interoperability. And because it's it's going to be a large system that it's difficult even for lar large company to, to dominate it. So it means that we have to figure out how uh, to solve interoperability problems or minimal interoperability problems because we cannot solve every interoperability problems in order to make sure that the uh, integration cost of the industrial metaverse does not impede market uptake. So this is one of the motivations for people uh, like uh, myself. So I, I was driving a little bit the initial phase of this um, exploratory group but my hope since day one was for uh, someone like Siemens to drive this moving forward because they have a wider scope and wider perspective on this. 
Uh, so uh, the motivation for the MSF Industrial Metaverse Group, it's to figure out the most important and representative use cases uh, to uh, related to the industrial metaverse uh, in production environment. Uh, and uh, and of course, uh, why why the focus on the industrial metaverse? Because we see immediate and clear return on investment, and we see already very very favorable uh, cost benefit trade offs, which make uh, viable use this case, uh, business cases for industrial metaverse. For, for instance, increased safety and productivity. Widen scope is the other attribute of the industrial metaverse. When we started this discussion in MSF. Uh, people, oh, but what's the difference with digital twins and the evolution of digital twins towards from IoT to 3D models? Uh, what's the difference with XR? What's the difference with IoT? Uh, and from my perspective, it's the combination and the fusion of all of this. Uh, and th that's wh what will define the industry in metaverse. But we still need to work together in order to come up with the uh, most important use cases. If possible, the high level architecture, if possible, the minimal interoperability, and that's the starting point to uh, make sure that we start real work with the standards association and industry organization to make that vision happen at scale. Caroline, anything to add from your perspective? Um, no, I think you explained it really well. Um, as you are all aware, um, for us, uh, really the, the vision to go towards uh, digitalization is that um, open ecosystem platform. Um, the next steps also for digitalization go towards the industrial metaverse and all of this um, immersing yourself in the digital twin, connecting all these assets, um, um, having the connection to the um, ITOT, um, all of this can only work uh, with when we have interoperability um, requirements in focus. And um, so we're very much behind this endeavor. In terms of uh, members who are supporting us for this, we have uh, companies like Siemens and Bosch. Uh, we have um, uh, NVIDIA, we have people from communication like uh, ourselves. We have OMG uh, part of this. We have also smaller companies from the XR domain and from uh, robotics. So we start to have uh, an initial kernel of uh, representative players to drive this. And this is uh, extremely appealing for us. Can we go to next slide? So this is an extract from our scope. Um, but for, for me, the most important things are representative use case, uh, high level architecture without competing with uh, other architecture bodies, a high level, which means we depict the high level subsystem and uh, minimal interoperability or the points or the, uh, the requirements for minimal interoperability. We plan to do this uh, in coordination with relevant organizations. I think the Digital Twins Consortium, IDTA, uh, whatever. In, in Germany, we have this Gaia X, which is very famous with the manufacturing X. Uh, we have other activities in MSF we will uh, coordinate with. And you have a link to the proposal that you see at the bottom of the slide. Next slide, maybe. Uh, this is a figure that we ended up uh, including in the charter of the um, or the initial proposal for the creation of the EG. And uh, this is just a non comprehensive, non complete attempt to represent the uh, variety of uh, association and industry organization dealing with the uh, metaverse. So you have the device, and in particular, the industrial metaverse, you have the infrastructure. Uh, with uh, hardware acceleration, cloud and networks, and you have at the right hand side the content and the evolution of um, towards, for instance, immersive media. And at the upper parts, you have the platforms, the digital twinning, the marketplaces and the services. Uh, 
and from uh, at least from my own perspective, the metaverse, uh, if we progress in terms of requirement setting, identifying of use cases, will uh, try to work with with uh, all of them in order to make sure that this uh, journey towards the industrial metaverse will happen in uh, a timely manner and in a coordinated manner. Next slide, maybe. So the, the next steps. So the way the MSF works is that we create this uh, notion of exploratory group. It's not a permanent working group. It's its focus will be uh, to build consensus on a charter, and the charter will be about a set of uh, deliverable and milestones for uh, the working group for the working group that we will create afterwards. Typically, eight weeks will be enough to uh, to go through this step. And then we hopefully, if uh, the charter is approved by uh, our oversight committee, we will start the work under the domain working group. A rough idea, and this is uh, probably driven by my own personal idea, it's, it's about the initial outcomes of the domain working groups, a set of representative use cases, which includes also terminology and agreement of the, on the major concepts reference slash high level architecture without being an interoperability architecture because we don't do standards in MSF and requirements about minimal interoperability for the industrial metaverse. And that should be an input for the uh, uh, for our dialogue with other working groups and other associations. Yeah, thank you, Omar and Caroline.